Here we've got the main castings of a Clarkson model stationary steam engine that I recently acquired as part of a larger lot of engineering stuff. And I'm going to have an attempt to make this model into a fully working specimen. As you can see somebody's already made a start at uh, some of the work on the model but I think some of the workmanship is slightly suspect um, and may need redoing. However, there's the base casting with the name Clarkson. Coming up to the cylinder there. Round edges screws have been used to hold on the cylinder. They certainly put plenty in. And also round edged screws holding the trunk of the cylinder there. As you can see, there's all sorts of shapes and sizes in there, which is probably because of the faulty alignment, but I could be wrong. The alignment of those screws there is also all over the place. And there's a flywheel to the right. The what you see here is basically what I've got to work with. Um, there is no steam chest, for instance, or steam chest cover, valve gear, crankshaft, or bearings, anything like that, eccentric. So they'll all be to uh, find and make. Um, but <coughs> more worryingly, um, the cylinder's been bored. And I don't know whether you can see from that, but doesn't look quite central to me and I think there could be issues there to do with the bar, the parallelity of the bar with the part face which may need addressing and some attention. Also the piston there has been turned and the cross head seems to be a rattling good fit into the trunk guide so again that's probably going to need some work. So, uh, potentially could be a nice model, um, I'm sure they are when they're put together. Um, I've never actually seen one in the flesh before, apart from this, so it should make an interesting exercise to see whether I can make it work. There we have the Clarkson stationary engine broken down into its component parts, ready for restoration. Clockwise from top left we've got the two spacer pieces, the trunk guide, the top cylinder cover, the cylinder, the piston, the flywheel, sundry fixings, piston rod, the cross head, the two standards and the base plate. Here you can see the Clarkson cylinder is removed from the engine. Uh, mounted on the Keats angle plate fixed to the lathe face plate and this is after the boring out operation to true the cylinder bar back up with the casting itself and as you can see this operation has exposed the end cover fixing screws and the holes drilled to accept them. With this in mind I think what I need to do now is make a liner to go within the casting to bring the cylinder bar back to its correct size and also to uh, cover up those exposed holes which would um, prevent the cylinder from being uh, steam tight as a piston travels through it. Okay here you can see the face plate fitted back on the lathe and if you look carefully you can see that the liner has been fitted inside the cylinder casting. I turned the liner slightly oversized from the bore of the cylinder casting and then placed the liner in the deep freeze and the cylinder casting in the oven uh, and left them both for about half an hour before bringing them both together. This meant that the liner was a fairly light driving fit inside the cylinder and hopefully when the temperature of the two equalises the cylinder as it contracts will uh, grab hold of the liner um, inside the cylinder and prevent it from turning. Um, you can see the small holes where the screws were and I'll fill those in due course uh, with some filler or something like that. But the cylinder casting with liner now is ready for boring out to the final size of the 
required bar of the cylinder. And there's the liner inside the cylinder after it's been born to size. Here we have the crosshead guide trunk from the engine and as you can see the fixing holes for the standard supports have been badly drilled and will need redoing. But more worryingly if you look at the drawing here to the right you can see that the mounting faces haven't been made square with the bore they're slightly like a parallelogram. You can just about see it here on the actual piece itself. I've over exaggerated it on the drawing, but you can see that it's quite a bit out. So I'm going to have to uh, square those and then I'll have to increase the thickness of the packing pieces that go between the trunk guide and the standards or the legs to make up for the difference uh, of the steel that I've removed during that operation. I'm slightly concerned about the bore of that trunk guide too. It seems to be wider at one end than the other. Um, so I'll need to give that a little bit of attention too. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. So here we are a few weeks later looking at the leftover components from the engine rebuild. Behind those we can see the completed engine. As you can see several new components were made to finish the engine off including the new drive pulley there on the end of the crankshaft the eccentrics behind the flywheel the top bearing covers and oil cups eccentric rods upper valve gear and valve operating mechanism valve rod steam chest and steam chest cover top cylinder cover cylinder lagging inlet pipe arrangement and at this side the exhaust pipe arrangement and back around this side you can see here the valve operating handle there if I rotate the engine round and then look at the new crankshaft crank web connecting rod, crosshead, piston rod and new piston obviously inside the cylinder there. I took the opportunity to make the engine reversible by introducing a second eccentric there that's why there's two normally there would only be one and this allows the engine to run in either direction one eccentric being responsible for forward motion the other one being responsible for reverse motion. These are linked together at the top through the Stevenson link which is that item there. When this lever is operated you can see that the motion transfers from one eccentric rod across to the other thereby reversing the motion of the engine. I will be making a subsequent video to explain a little bit more about the valve gear and uh, we'll show the engine running under compressed air. And just to remind you it's a Clarkson engine which originated from York in North Yorkshire. The firm's no longer in existence I believe so they're rather few and far between these engines. So keep an eye out for the following video and have a look at the engine when it's running and I'll explain to you a little bit more about the valve gear for those of you who don't already know.